Yeah, hello everyone. Myself Maruti. Welcome you all to this math video session. In this video, I'm going to explain you regarding linear equations and the two variables. Okay. So now, as I'm dealing with the real life application, now I'm getting into transport department, the journeys, right? The total journeys, right? But generally, uh, journey means, as you all know, the uh, the point from where we start and the point till where we reach. Right. Obviously, we take up any vehicle to reach our destination. Right. But nowadays, uh, familiar uh, transport, uh, transportation things are trains, cars, boats, everything and all. But in our case, in our case, we are taking uh, two transport department things that is a train and a car. Right. So now, uh, now uh, when we are dealing with the journey, obviously the three things what we have discussed is speed, distance and time. These are the three general things what we discuss. Now let's get into the sum and discuss a sum for you. Let's introduce the three concepts, speed, distance, sum for you now. Let's see here. Right here says Rahim travels 600 kilometers to his town partly by train and partly by car so that's the point here to be noted a person by name Rahim right he is planning to go to his town or he is planning to go somewhere right to to his town right he is planning to, to go to his town but the thing is he is not able to move from his place to the town directly in a single uh, single vehicle right he wants to go there is there is some option for him he has to take up a train till certain place and from there onwards he has to go to his uh, town with the help of a car so how many transports he has taken two things he has taken okay that is the point to be noted now the second thing as he is using two vehicles obviously the speed of the two things will be different first thing is train second thing is car right the speed of the car train is different from the speed of the car right and the total distance whatever he may be talking the total distance is 600 whereas first journey might be it means the distance traveled by the train might be different and distance traveled by the car might be different but if you add up both it will be the 600 kilometers right that is in the first case that's what the point says right Rahim traveled 600 kilometers to his town partly by train and partly by car fine it's no issues total distance is 600 cool he takes eight hours if he travels right 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 okay right the total distance is 600 you have to remember that he takes 800 kilometer eight hours if he travels 120 kilometers by train and the rest by the car what is the total distance 600 okay now in the first case how many kilometers he is traveling by train and how many kilometers he is traveling by car that's point to be noted if he, he takes and the total time taken to reach the destination is eight hours right he takes eight hours if he travels 120 kilometers by train and rest by the car that's the case one yes now right he takes 20 more minutes if he travels in the second case in the second case right the total kilometers is 600 always it might be the return journey or in the other day or one more time of his journey right if he travels 200 kilometers by train and the rest by the car he takes 20 kilometers more than the first journey okay how much time is taken by him in the first journey eight hours right now in the second journey right uh, how much time is taking 20 minutes more means 8 hours plus 20 minutes that is 8 hours 20 minutes is taking so you have to remember that one total distance 600 right time taken by in the first journey 8 hours time taken in the second journey 8 hours 20 minutes okay what are the two departments of transportation train and the car Right, the only thing is in the first case he traveled 120 kilometers by train and the rest by the car. In the second case, he traveled 200 kilometers by train and rest by the car. Okay, hope you are able to understand the concept of what I have given here. Let me introduce all the things for you. Alright, so but as I said to you, what we are supposed to introduce, we are supposed to introduce speed, distance and time for both the cases. But before getting into both the cases, let's introduce generally. 
let's introduce it generally so introduction we are going for that introduction of introduction of speed right distance right and the time let's deal with all the three cases now okay but before that what's the total journey right let's take uh, the point a to the point b this is the total journey here his town is the town is at the point of b and he is here now now at the present he is here right the total journey the total journey as he said the distance is something like 600 kilometers the total distance is 600 kilometers is it cool yes in this one what is the case he is talking about right half till here somewhere till here right from here to here he is going by train right and from there onwards he is moving by car you have to remember this one. So this is the general scenario what he has given. Now let's introduce the concepts here. Right? Speed is nothing but S. Distance is nothing but T. And time is nothing but T or capital T. Anything you can take. Now let's deal with the speed. Now what are the two vehicles he is using? He is using the train and using the car. What are the true two modes of transportation? Right? Train and the car. Okay, now what is the speed of the train and what is the speed of the car? That's what introduce that one. So, speed, well, we are introducing first to the concept of speed. Yes, I'm introducing concept of speed here. First, you have to introduce speed. Later on, we have introduced the distance. Later on, we have to introduce the time. That's what I said, introduction of speed, distance and time. So, let's go for the train. Speed of the train. Speed of train. Right, speed of the train as we don't know, let it be x kilometers per hour, x kilometers per hour. So, I have introduced the speed of the train, I am calling it as x kilometers, fine, fine. Now, let's think about the car, speed of the car, what is that? Let me take it as y, okay, let me write it down for you, speed of car, speed of the car B, y kilometers per hour yes introduction of the speed is completed out of the three concepts speed distance and time okay now let's introduce the concept of distance right let me introduce the concept of distance okay now what is the total distance of journey total distance total distance right of journey what is the total distance of journey right straight away it is nothing but 600 kilometers that's what he has given okay so what is that 600 shall i say distance traveled by the car train plus distance traveled by the uh, car right that is that is that is distance traveled Right, traveled by train plus distance traveled by car is equal to 600 kilometers. This is what point to be noted. Right, he said the total distance is 600. What does it mean? It means the distance traveled by the car, train plus distance traveled by the car equals 600 kilometers. But if you check it out, continuously he is giving the distance traveled by the train he is talking about train he has given he is not mentioning what is the distance traveled by the car he didn't mention the distance traveled by the car he is not mentioning he is not mentioning right distance traveled right distance traveled by the train he is mentioning you have to remember that one so distance traveled by the train he is giving always whereas distance traveled by the car he is not giving we have to find it out for that one what is the formula we are using which implies distance distance right traveled by car distance traveled by car equals what's that 600 minus distance traveled by the train distance traveled by the train i like to repeat this one distance traveled by the car is equal to 600 minus distance traveled by the train this is the formula what we are supposed to use in this sum 
to think about the concept of distance i repeat i repeat distance total distance of the journey right the total distance of the journey i like to call it as capital d if you want is equal to 600 kilometers what is that 600 kilometers distance traveled by the train plus distance traveled by the car is equal to 600 but if you check it out in the sum always he has given distance traveled by the train in the first case and also the second case he didn't give the distance traveled in the, um, the by the car so to know the distance traveled by car obviously you transpose to this one 600 minus this that is the concept so speed i have introduced right distance i have to introduce now what is the other concept obviously we have to introduce it's nothing but the time t means the time okay now what is the formula relating what is the formula generally we use dealing with speed distance and time is nothing but speed equals distance right distance by time this is the general formula what we use in any sum right that is speed is equal to distance by time okay but but the sum is entirely circulating according to the time why because in the first sum he said eight hours right in the second sum he said eight hours 20 minutes right everything is moving in terms of time therefore right uh, make the time as the subject here therefore d by s this is the formula what we are going to use but time is equal to distance by speed that is what you are supposed to understand here right now one more important formula what we have to remember in this concept is total time total time of journey equals total time of the journey equals time taken time by train journey plus time for car journey this is what we are supposed to remember this is the other formula what you are supposed to remember i repeat i repeat speed concept we have introduced x kilometers is the speed of the train and y kilo y kilometers per hour is the speed for the car point one right while introducing the distance total distance is 600 and what is nothing but a combination of both the distance but as he is not giving the car distance we have to use this formula to find it out point two and uh, as we are dealing with the speed distance and time as we are making the subject time is equal to distance by speed and the very important formula is time of the total journey time total time for the journey for journey for journey is equal to time by train journey plus the time taken by car journey so this is the introduction right now using the introduction concepts let's work on let's work on on the two cases what he has given what are the two cases what he has given if he travels 120 kilometers by train remaining by car he takes eight hours that is the first relation Second one, if he travels 200 kilometers by train, rest by the car, it takes 20 more minutes than the earlier. That is, earlier is 8 hours. Now it is 8 hours, 20 minutes. So these two cases are used to frame two equations for us so that we can find the values of the two variables. Let's come back to the two journeys what he has planned here, right? So in the journey one, what did Rahim do? right total journey of 600 kilometers he takes eight hours for him right if he if train journey is 120 kilometers and rest by the car i repeat total journey of 600 kilometers takes eight hours if train journey is equal to 120 kilometers and rest by the car so he is here now his town is here the total distance is 600 kilometers and with the help of train he is going 120 kilometers he didn't give what is the distance he traveled in car he didn't give it but we know the formula how to get it all right so let's go there so distance traveled by train distance distance traveled right in train 
distance traveled in train is equal to 120 kilometers right cool now after knowing the distance traveled this is already given we need to know what is the distance traveled by him in the car right then obviously distance traveled distance traveled in car in car just now i have introduced the formula total distance minus right distance traveled by train in the train this is the formula right so what is the total distance it's 600 kilometers minus what is the distance traveled in the train it's nothing but 120 kilometers obviously it becomes 480 kilometers so the distance traveled by the car is nothing but 480 kilometers so right the distance traveled in car is nothing but 480 kilometers so speed we know speed is nothing but x kilometers per hour and y kilometers per hour that the cruel now distance we have concluded now we need the time right just now we are dealing with the time for train journey time for train journey is equal to just now i said it's nothing but distance right distance by train by speed of train that's what we know so which is nothing but what is the distance traveled by the train it's nothing but 120 kilometers by what is the speed of the train x kilometers per hour right so obviously we get cancelled now time taken for train journey we got it as 120 by x hours this is the cool thing what we got i repeat Time for train journey equals distance traveled by train by speed of the train equals distance traveled by the train is 120. Speed of the train we know x cancel the kilometers we get it's nothing but hours here. So right here it is 120 by x hours. Now distance time for time for car journey car journey equals distance by the car by speed of the car i say dc distance by the car what is the distance traveled by the car it's nothing but 480 kilometers by what is the speed of the car y kilometers per hour so it's nothing but as we are getting it's uh, time time for car journey equals we are getting it as 480 by y hours this is the very cool thing what we are having now okay now as we have discussed earlier the total journey time the total journey time is nothing but the sum of both the journeys here the total journey time right if you focus on that total journey right total journey takes how many hours eight hours total journey takes eight hours so what is total journey total journey what is that one time for train journey plus time for car journey time for train journey plus time for car journey equals eight hours is it cool now what is the time taken for train journey it's nothing but 120 by x hope you can see this 120 by x plus what is the time taken for car journey 480 by y equals 8 hours this is what we got it as equation 1 I repeat right total journey takes eight hours what is the meaning of total journey time for the train journey plus time for the car journey which is equal to eight hours right what is the time taken for the train journey 120 by x that is 120 by x plus what is the time time taken for the car journey 480 by y which is nothing but eight hours with the help of this one we got what is the uh, time taken for the total journey with the help of train and the car this is the equation one now let's go for the second scenario 
Second scenario, right? Let's uh, calculate in terms of whatever the calculation he has given. Okay, now, now what is the total distance? Right, right. Total distance is nothing but 600 he has given. What is the distance traveled by train? Distance by train. Distance traveled by train equals how much is that? 200 kilometers. Okay, so what is distance traveled by car? By car is equal to obviously total distance minus distance by train. Distance by train. Right, so what is that one? Total distance, how much you got? It's not like we deal with here. So it's nothing but distance traveled by car is equal to 600 minus 200, which is nothing but 400 kilometers. What is that? Distance traveled by the car. Oh God. Now, obviously we are working for the time concept now, right? Time for time taken for car journey or train journey first train journey what is the time taken obviously we calculate like a distance distance of train by speed right what is the distance traveled by the train it's nothing but 200 kilometers by what is the speed of the train obviously we discussed it is x kilometers per hour so we are getting it as a 200 by x what is that one time taken for the train journey in the same way time for car journey time for car journey equals distance by train distance by car by speed of the car what is the distance traveled by the car? It's nothing but 400 kilometers by what is the speed of the car? Y kilometers per hour. So cancel it out. We are getting it as 400 by Y hours. Here also it's nothing but hours. Is it cool? Now what is the concept he has given? Total time takes 20 minutes more than the first case. In the first case he has given it already 8 hours. In the first case, he has already given 8 hours. Now he says 20 minutes more. Earlier it is 8 hours. Now it is more than that one. How much? 20. So 8 hours, 20 minutes. That's what he says. Right? Right. We are calling means total journey. Total journey takes 8 hours, 20 minutes more. 20 minutes more. Okay, so what I can say that is right time for right train journey plus time for car journey equals 8 hours plus 20 minutes. This is what we have to supposed to remember. Is it cool? Now, what is the time taken for train journey? It's nothing but 200 by x hours. Plus, what is the time taken for the car journey? 400 by y hours equals earlier it is 8 hours, right? 8 hours. Now it is 20 minutes. Right? Now we need to convert that one in terms of our simplified equation. Now I can call it as 8 hours, right? It is 20 by 60 hours. Right, this is 20 minutes, means 20 minutes out of what? It's nothing but it is 20 out of 60 minutes. So if I have to convert in terms of hours, this is the way what I am supposed to do. 20 by 60, right? Then I can straight away 21s and 23s, it is 8 1 by 3 hours. If you simplify that one, 8 3 is 24, 24 plus 1, 25 by 3. Right, so now what is the new equation what we got? We got it as 200 by x plus 400 by y equals 25 by 3. Yo man, this is equation 2.
okay so you got equation one and you got equation two we need to simplify this one so that we can know the speed of the train and speed of the yeah, so we got the two equations now. So equation one and equation two. But please remember, we are supposed to convert in the form of a linear equation, right? We are supposed to convert that one in the form of linear equations. So let's work on, on the first one here. All right. So what I'm doing, I'm taking eight common there. I'm taking eight as common there. If I take eight common, it's nothing but 15 by X. Plus, I'm taking, if I take 8 common there, so it's uh, nothing but, right, so right, if you take 8 common there, it is nothing but 16 by y equals 8. If you take it out, why? Because 15 eights, 120, 68, it's uh, 480, 6 eights are 48. Now, straight away, we can cancel 8 and 8. Okay, now, what is the thing left over? 15 by x plus 60 by y, right, equals 1. This is what the concept of what we left. Now, let's convert this one as 15 into 1 by x plus 16 into 1 by y equals 1. Okay, so what I have taken, I have taken 15 out, so 1 by x. Now, let's convert, let's assume x as a and y as b if you convert right, just to make it simpler to convert in the form of a linear equation i'm taking 1 by x as a and 1 by y as b obviously this becomes 15 a plus 60 b equals 1 that is the equation what we got so this is the equation i repeat i repeat if you check it out if you check it out so let me work on for you right so i'm taking eight common here it becomes 15 8 15 8 120 uh, right 68 it's 480 now i have cancelled it right the left over is this i took 15 to the side to convert in the form of linear equation i took 1 by x as a therefore the equation became 15 a plus 60 b equals 1 all right in the similar fashion let's go for the second equation now let's go for the second equation now now i think let me take 25 as common here if i take 25 as common it becomes 8 by x right i think it's become something like a 16 by y right equals 25 by 3 please check it out 8 into 25 200 16 into 25 it's nothing but 400 now i can cancel the 25 there so what is left over 8 by x plus 16 by y equals 1 by 3 right but i don't want the 3 to be here just i like to cross it if i cross this one 8 3 is 24 by x plus if i cross this 48 by y equals 1 okay now again now i like again i like to send 24 to the side 24 into 1 by x plus 48 into 1 by y equals 1 and as if i have taken 1 by x as a and 1 by y as b i like to call this as 24a plus 48 b equals 1 yes i got an equation here and i got an equation here cool hope you are able to understand but i like to solve solving equations solving equations right by elimination method elimination method okay that is the method i like to work but right we are supposed to make any one of the variables equal so that i can cancel so i'm picking the 60b and 48b i want to make the coefficients equal here it is 60b and this is 48b why because the 60 and 48 both we can check it out in the six table right so what i'm doing i'm taking the gcd greatest common factor of what's that 48 and 60 i'm working on right what i'm doing 48 right i'm dividing by right so and so 
once it's 48 it's nothing but 12 right 48 it's nothing but 4 it's 48 it's nothing but 0 okay now what i'm doing i got yes this is the gcd okay now i'm taking the lcm 12 i'm taking these four two numbers 48 and 60 right 12 this one goes four times and this one it is five times okay now you check it out we are having the portion 60 and 48 to make them equal to make them equal what we are supposed to do just you cross the 60 should be multiplied by 4 and 45 should be multiplied by 5 that is point to be noted now if i call this as equation 3 and if i call this as equation 4 right 60 see here 60 should be multiplied by what 4 so equation 3 equation 3 i like to multiply with a 4 that's the point and the equation 4 equation 4 which is having equation 4 is having 48 48 should be multiplied by 5 right why so simply to make the coefficients equal so that we can change the signs and we can cancel it with the help of elimination method right so now straight away so let's work on on this one so we are multiplying the third equation so third equation with the, what's that 4 yeah so if you multiply the third equation third equation with the four and the fourth equation if you multiply the fourth equation with five these are the numbers what we are getting here right so 60a 240b is equal to 4 and 120a plus 240b is equal to 5 as we are seeing see the quotients here the quotients are equal here right so let's cancel it out and here you are getting it as minus 60a is equal to minus 1 so multiply with the minus on both the sides so we get the 60a equals 1 and a is equal to 1 by 60 yes we got the value of a right but our concept is not only finding a we need to find the value of b also substitute the value of a in any one of the equations here so substituting let me do it here substituting a is equal to 1 by 60 in equation something like uh, in equation 3 i like to go right what's the third equation there third equation is 15 uh right right yeah 15 a this is 60 for you right 15 a plus 60 b equals 1 what is a value it's nothing but 1 by 60 okay now if you cancel 15 1 since it's nothing but force 1 by 4 plus 60 b equals 1 so 60 b equals 1 minus 1 by 4 60 b equals if you go for this 4 minus 1 it's 3 by 4 60 b equals 3 by 4 3 ones and 3 twenties so it's 20 b equals 1 by 4 which implies b is equal to 1 by it's nothing but 80 right so we got the value of hope you are able to understand that so here we got it as 1 by 80 but what is a here you got a equals how much you got 1 by 60 and b you got it's as 1 by 80 but a what did you think a is nothing but 1 by x is equal to 1 by 60 and what is the b value we took 1 by y is equal to 1 by 80 now if you equate that x is equal to 60 and y is equal to 80 cool but what is x and what is y so speed of the train is 60 kilometers per hour therefore speed of train right comma x is equal to 60 kilometers per hour and the speed of car right y equals 80 kilometers per hour guys it's a beautiful way of dealing any concept which is dealing with the train and whatever it might be different speed so you got the value of a and you got the value of b but as we have converted in terms of a and b i went to the so and so so speed of the car and speed of the train we are able to this we can verify by keeping the values in an equation and check it out hope you are able to understand in this channel 
I have been placing both math and science videos 